In this video lecture, we're going to be talking about probability basics. So firstly, let's mention and discuss a few of the definitions that's required. So a sample space, S, is basically a set consisting of all possible outcomes. So this has all the outcomes of the experiment that we are trying to study. Right, so sample space consists of everything that could occur. Right, and let's consider an event. Right, so an event E is a subset of S, which is the list of all possible outcomes. And using our set notation, this is denoted, of course, E subset of S. Now, if we wanted to talk about the probability of event E occurring, then the probability of E is then equal to the total number so it's the number of ways in which event E can occur divided by the total number of ways that the, or all possible outcomes of the experiment right so the number of ways that E can occur divided by the total number of outcomes of the experiment is the probability of E Remember, when we discuss probability, essentially what we are trying to calculate or measure is the likelihood of event E occurring. Alright, so just to give you a bit more information about this measure that we have. So remember, since S consists of all possible outcomes of the experiment, the probability of S occurring is actually equal to 1 because since this is the list of everything we know that something is going to definitely occur so we assign that probability a measure of 1 to denote that it will definitely happen um, if we then discuss the probability of the empty set remember the empty set is the set consisting of no elements there's nothing in it so the probability of nothing happening we then give that a measure of 0 now recall that event E was a subset of the total number of outcomes. So therefore, based on what I just explained here, the probability of E occurring is then sandwiched between 0 and, and 1. Where 0 means that the event will not occur, and 1 means that the event will definitely occur. Now just giving you a picture of this, so if I had to draw the sample space, Right, so let's say this was S. So this is the set consisting of all possible outcomes. And E is a subset of it. So E is contained in S. So let's just say this green portion is set E. Then everything outside of E, but still contained in S, so I'm going to shade that in. Right, so everything that I've shaded is then considered to be E complement. Right, which is denoted as E prime. Right, so observe that both E and E complement, where E complement den denotes everything that's not in E, right, they both, when added together, give you the entire sample space. So using set notation, we then observe that E union E complement is equal to the entire set, the sample space S. And more importantly, observe that they do not intersect each other. There is no way that they overlap based on how I have drawn it or explained what E prime means. So we then have that E intersection, E prime, equals empty since there is no overlap. So when E intersection, when these are two events, E and E prime are two different events, and their intersection is empty, we then say that these two events are disjoint or mutually exclusive. So, so that is the terms that you would read up in your textbook. 
based on this diagram, based on the fact that it's disjoint, that we see that they don't overlap, and we see that the union, when you're adding these two sets together, gives you the entire sample space S, we just look at this, observe that the probability of E plus probability of E prime equals to 1. Right, and using this, we can then rewrite, therefore, the probability of the complement of E is equal to 1 minus the probability of E. So if you knew what the probability of event E was, you would then be able to compute the probability of the complement of E by just taking 1 minus the probability of E. Now, another important thing is just to note based on disjoint and mutually exclusive events. Right, so if I give, gave you two events, Right, so given events E and F, right, so if E and F are disjoint, meaning they are mutually exclusive, meaning that there is no intersection, just like how E and E prime, meaning E complement, are mutually exclusive, then the probability of E union F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. So that's an important thing to note. It is in fact this property that we had used to write down that the probability of E plus the probability of E complement equals to 1. That is because probability of E union E complement is equal to probability of S and we knew that was 1. So that is how we had obtained that value of 1. Right, so now that was case 1. Right, if they were both disjoint or mutually exclusive. So what happens if they're not disjoint? So 2, if E and F are not disjoint. Right, so pictorially if we had to draw this, um, right, so if they were not disjoint, so let's just say I had my sample space S, and I then have E, and then here is F. Right, so observe that E and F, when drawn um, using this this Venn diagram, do in fact overlap. Right, so they are not disjoint, they are not mutually exclusive. In this case, the probability of E union F is then equal to, as before, we still include the sum, the probability of E, plus the probability of event F occurring, but then we subtract the overlap, and this overlap is now described using the intersection. So this, in order to subtract that, we take the probability of E intersection F. Right, so two important notions to keep in mind and two important formulae. Right, so this is the basic summary for probability, so keep this in mind when it comes to different questions that you may get asked. I'm now going to go through the following question. It says, find the probability of being dealt a full house in a poker game. Right, so you may not know how to play poker and that is fine. Right, so let's just take note of what's required. We are told what a full house is. Right, so a full house is a set of cards that include three of one kind and two of another kind. Right, so an example is given. You are told, for example, you may pick three queens and two tens. Now, in the game of poker, you will be dealt five cards. So each player gets five cards. Right, and we want to know, based on the five cards that we have, what is the probability of, those, of having three of one kind and two of another in those five cards that you are dealt? Right, so firstly, in order to compute the probability, we also have to understand what is happening in the sample space. Right, so firstly, S will then consist of all combinations of five cards, right? So all possible ways that you could be dealt five cards. Um, now, keeping in mind, we need to know, are we going to use permutations or combinations? 
Right, so firstly, are repeats allowed? So observe that in this case, repeats cannot even occur because in your cards, in your deck of cards, every single card is unique. You do not have two of exactly the same cards. For example, you do not have two cards um, being, uh, let's say, ace of spades. There's no two ace of spades in a, in a deck of cards. So as a result, we know that there are no repeats, so you cannot have two of the exact same cards in your hand. And also note that order does not matter. So for example, so let me just make a note, order does not matter. Right, so if, for example, I had, let's say I had all, all of the cards in my hand were spades and I had 9, 10, jack, queen, and king. So this will then be the same as saying that I'm holding 10, jack, queen, king, and a 9 because order does not matter. The fact that you have th th that combination of cards is exactly as saying that I have that combination of cards. Right, so we have order does not matter and there are no repeats. So this implies that we are definitely working with combinations. Right, so how many different combinations do we have in our sample space? We then observe that the deck, we know that a deck of cards has a total of 52 cards. So therefore, when we are taking combinations of five cards out of 52, this simply amounts to calculating 52 combination five. Right, so that is the total number of elements in the sample space. Right, so the total number of ways that you could be dealt five cards is 52 combination five. We now want to compute the probability of the event so let E then denote having three of one kind and two of another. Now when you look at this, you can then split this up into stages. So picking three of one kind or being dealt three of one kind and two of another can be viewed as different stages. So this is stage one and then stage two. So by our basic counting principle, we will then count the number of ways that this could occur in stage one, count the number of ways that this would occur in stage two, and multiply them together. Right, so let's work with stage one, three of one kind. So you also need to note that we have a total of 13 different kinds in one deck of cards. Right, so one deck has 13 different kinds. For example, um, your 10 jack queen king ace and your 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so there's a total of 13 kinds each kind then has four different suits when I say suits I'm talking about hearteen spades clubs and uh, what did I leave out diamonds right so that's what I'm talking about in there right so when we say three of one kind it means, for example, maybe I've picked the, I have the hearts, spades, and diamonds of one kind. So I do not have the, the clubs. All right, so if I had to pick three of one kind, for example, if I picked three queens, in how many ways would that occur? Right, so we know that we have four suits. So if I had to pick one kind, they, that kind has four suits. So that means in order to pick three of one kind, I'm now then computing four combination three because each kind has four choices for me to pick from. Again, why did I use combinations? I've used combinations because no repeats are allowed and order once again does not matter. But now once I've picked three of one kind, remember that they are a total of 13 kinds. So I could have picked this in 13 different possible ways. So therefore, the, the total number of ways to pick three of one kind is 13 times four combination three. Now let's go on to picking from stage two. I need two of another kind, right? So for example, picking two tens. Now, in order to pick two of another kind again, remember we have four choices in each kind. So I'm picking two from a total of four choices, so it's four combination two. Now, 
in general we have 13 kinds can i again pick two from a kind that has already been chosen observe that we cannot because if i picked three queens i cannot go ahead and pick another two queens from it so as a result in stage two i no longer have a choice of 13 kinds i now have a choice of 12 so it's 12 times four choose two so now that we have all of the the outcomes in each of these events as well as in the sample space Calculating the probability of event E occurring, meaning picking three of one kind and two of another, or being dealt that kind of hand, is equal to the number of, out number of ways in which E can occur divided by the total number of outcomes in S. The total number of ways in which event E can occur is equal to stage 1 times stage 2. So we know it's 13 times 4 choose 3 times 12 times 4 choose 2 divided by total number of ways that s can occur which is 52 choose 5. You can then put this into your calculator or of course you can simplify using the properties of combinations that I had taught you before. Right, so that's where I'm ending this video lecture.